So would you want me to dedicate the book to? To Mary. That's a really nice name. Girlfriend? Nope. Yeah, matama nila ako nito talaga. Harap harap ang dinay dinay jowa nila. She's not my jowa. Hello guys, today we're going to review the movie Yung Libro sa Napanood Ko, also known as The Book in the Show I Watch from Viva Films. But before we continue, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video, comment, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you'll be updated when new content comes out. Memory is a strange thing. Normally, it is what drives change in organisms. If something big happens to an animal, the experience remains in its DNA and makes for a learning experience. It is the fuel of evolution. Remembrance of stimuli makes life move forward. But what happens if memory is the one that stops an individual from moving forward? That is the dilemma faced by the characters of Yung Libro sa Napanood Ko, written and directed by Bella Padilla. We meet characters in Lisa, a book author who meets Kim, a fan of her book, who brings her to Korea. While in Korea, they eventually grow closer, but an event that happened in the past that connects both of them threatens their budding relationship. The film talks about mental health issues, especially those about trauma. We see both characters deal with how memory can help people move with their lives and how at the same time put their lives on hold. It is a good thing that the treatment of mental health issues was not heavy-handed. It was discussed just enough to move the story. For a beginning director, Bella Padilla passes and we see potential in her. She is able to compose some shots beautifully, making for a generally pleasant visual experience, especially when the scenes are set in Korea. She is also able to concoct a love story that while relying on the usual kilig techniques, works most of the time. There is a certain maturity to the story and doesn't fall into the trap of the usual romantic movies where the goal is to make cutesy scenes that will make couples squeal in delight. Of course, there are cutesy scenes but they are executed with more subtlety. The dialogue written by Bella Padilla while not memorable serves its purpose. But we also see the awkward first few directorial steps of Padilla. The editing could be better as there are narrative and timeline jumps that might be confusing for people because of how abrupt they were. This editing fog also resulted in a rushed resolution because how the couple's problem was solved proved a little too convenient. Perhaps there were scenes that were edited out that would better set up the ending. The way it was done borders on Deus Ex Machina. Padilla also has a tendency to have her close-ups too close. This can be a bit uncomfortable, especially if you watch the movie in a theater that has a larger than average screen, which I did. In terms of narrative, there were choices that made me scratch my head. Minor spoiler here. There was a phone call from Lisa's mother, played by Lorna Tolentino, where the mother was just mouthing the lyrics of If, a song by the band River Maya, which just came off as forced and contrived as the song wasn't really given much importance in the story Except for it being the theme song, that scene just made me cringe. Padilla also relies on cliches like the slow-mo shots to make the actors look gorgeous and the taking care of a drunk lady to show tenderness. Being marketed as a love story, one should ask whether I felt that butterflies in the stomach feeling. Yes, I did. Padilla and you have a light chemistry that helped greatly. One could feel the connection between the two leads. Watch out for that scene when you helps Padilla open the door to her place. The tension in that scene was palpable, helped by the nervously anticipating expression on Padilla. Padilla delivers a sympathetic lead performance but the one to watch is you who is simply lovable and has a goofy cute smile that could rival a puppy. With memory being a major thematic point for the movie, I am hoping that Padilla takes lessons to heart and remembers them for her next directorial project. We see her making mistakes but she can be forgiven as the good things in the movie outnumber the bad. Yung libro sa napanood ko is not perfect but perfectly acceptable. So that's the review for Yung libro sa napanood ko from Viva Films. This has been Kulas for Tambe Reviews. Thank you for watching. Keep on playing.